It's a lovely sunny afternoon this afternoon, so I've come out with the tutu to do a little bit of rabbiting. Now, I've got a couple of still rabbits out that were still targets from Tom's targets, so I'm gonna have a couple of shots at them just to make sure the rifle's still where it should be. I've got the Begara B14R with me. It's um, a lovely little rifle, this. It's my own rifle, I've bought this. This is, I'm not like, bigging this up or anything for manufacturers. I bought it, I like it, and it's a really good gun. So I'm gonna be putting that through its paces. I've got an Element uh, Titan scope on there, and it makes for a really good little combination. Now, uh, I'm gonna be using high velocity ammunition in this, because I wanna be able to stretch the ranges out a little bit. Now, I've got a target down here where I've got one at 50 meters, and I've got another one at 100 meters, so that should just uh, confirm that my drops are what they should be. So, without further ado, let's go and put a couple of rounds down range. Well that certainly seems to be pretty good, so let's take it out and see if we can find a rabbit or two. Here looks a pretty good spot. Um, I'm overlooking a couple of rabbit burrows just in front of me there. Uh, they are um, they're about 60, 70 meters. And there's also a hedgerow at the bottom there, which is about 70 to 80 meters along there where rabbits constantly come out. There's also a possibility of some longer shots sort of right down the, the bottom there. And also back this way, so yeah, should be a fairly target rich environment. So we get set up and see what comes along. So typically now the sun's gone in and uh, the wind's picked up a bit as well. We've probably got a five to 10 mile an hour wind blowing down across this valley and up this bank. So any shots that way are gonna be uh, subject to the full force of the wind across there. Um, mine will sound like an awful lot and if you're using a centrefire, it wouldn't be much, but using a little 2-2, two -two, it could well push that about a little bit. So uh, that's certainly gonna be something to, um, to keep an eye on. So we've got our first rabbit out. He's at 100 meters. So, okay, okay, that is six MOA elevation. I'm gonna put in 275 for the wind.
downside to using high velocity ammunition in the 2.2 is that it does mean that the rifle goes with a bit more of a crack, much like the 17 HMR. It does, however, mean that you can stretch the ranges out that bit further. It's not as flat shooting as a HMR. The HMR uses a lighter bullet, probably about half the weight, and it's traveling a lot faster as well. But it does mean you can reach out that bit further. Uh, probably similar ranges to what you can with the HMR if you know the drops. So it does give you the best of both worlds because you can still use obviously subsonic ammunition for nice quiet pest control as well with the same rifle. Right, so we've got another one out here at 164 meters. So somewhat further, just put that in. Calculate, and that is giving me a correction of 16 and a half MOA. All right, and I've got 275 windage still dialed on there from the last shot. Another one down. That was quite a stretch. That one. I don't want to shoot much further than that on the uh, on the bunnies, but uh, yeah, good result. Still, he's gone over, so that's the main thing. So that's another one there. That was out at 74 metres. Just come out of the hedgerow there. That's only a half grown one, but they uh, grow to be big rabbits. Well, that one won't, but as a rule, they do. out 107 meters so I've just moved a little bit further along this bank as uh, what was coming out here has just been sort of down this end I haven't seen much at all coming out the Warrens a little bit further along there possibly because of um, they go with a couple of high velocity shots and it's been quite loud up here um, this evening but I keep my eyes peeled and see what what comes out right on last light because as you can see it's starting to get dark now so I've got the uh, little PAR 007 on the back of the rifle there so it does give me the option to shoot a little bit um, a bit longer after dark but I don't really want to, to be honest I want to get out after a fox that's been taking some um, lambs up on another farm so I'll probably just give it about an hour and then head off down there. So um, it's pretty much dark now. Uh, I just managed to shoot one more that came out of the hedge down the bottom there that was 72 metres or something. And I can't see anything else much down this end, but up the other end there, there's a fair few rabbits that have come out at uh, the bottom of that bit of cover up there. So I might just gather these up and then walk up there and see if I can get one more up there before heading off to the next farm.
So uh, this field just to my right here is the one where he's lost some lambs in. So so far he's lost three lambs over four nights. Um, there's a stream runs down the edge of that field and uh, the field kind of drops away a little bit and then it goes up and it goes onto a little um, orchard behind with a bit of a raised bank. Uh, there's a few houses up the top there which makes shooting a little bit difficult. Um, so you really have to kind of pick your shots a little bit here. So I'm going to be very careful which direction I shoot in, but um, I'm thinking if I stand at the top of this bank here, the top of the field, then um, firstly I've got the trees to silhouette me, or to stop my silhouette I should say, up the top there. And it gives me a good view down across this field. good I'm in position and uh, I like him what I see I've got a good view down across this field I can also keep an eye on the field uh, that I'm standing in behind me and that because there's a couple of areas there a fox can come in from we've got another house down the bottom of the field straight down here um, just to add to the uh, places I can't shoot but I've got quite a good sort of wind of opportunity straight down through here uh, so uh, just a quick run through the gear and that, that I've got with me tonight. I'm using the uh, Mauser M12 there, 243, so if I see a fox then um, it's going to get quite pasting from that. And I've also got a really nice scope which I've literally just zeroed yesterday and that is the Tube um, TH50. Uh, this is the version 2, this is the newer newer model. I had the uh, the version 1 before that, really liked it. I thought that was the best scope on the market, to be quite honest, best thermal scope anyway, or at least that I've, I've tested. But um, having now used this one, then uh, there's a few extra features in that on this one, and it is a little bit clearer as well, and it's a, a brilliant bit of kit, so I'm really uh, chuffed to be using that, to be honest. So, yeah, that's the infrared scope. Um, recon tripod, good little bit of kit for this sort of thing. Not much more I can tell you about the rifle really. Got a MAE T12 Scout moderator on the front there. Harris bipod. Yeah, and we're using, um, what were they? Federal. <laughs> Couldn't think what they were for a minute. Federal 75 grain ballistic tip ammo as well. Oh, and also pulsar mergers. So um, when I saw this fox here before, it came in soon after midnight. Um, it came in from the orchard down the bottom there. And uh, I was um, I was literally just walking up the fence line in the middle of the field here. And I glanced around with the thermal and there it was. And it was going straight towards me and we did that kind of Mexican standoff. We both got to see each other at the same time. Um, and uh, he moved first, went sort of walking back up through the uh, uh, through the orchard, and um, I quickly got the rifle up on the tripod, and I gave him a little squeak to stop him, and he looked round, and I was just about to squeeze the shot, and then he turned and carried on going. So I gave him another little squeak, and he looked back, he didn't like that, and he was just gone. And uh, he didn't particularly sort of bolt away quick, but he he uh, sort of slunk off up through the uh, through the orchard there and um, I couldn't get a shot because of the houses and that from where I was. So, a bit unfortunate, but uh, yeah, so um, I've seen them once and um, actually twice because I remember uh, probably a week before that I saw him on this field to the right here, just cutting across about the same time actually, about midnight. So, uh, about half eleven now, so uh, we've got well 
there's a good chance it'll be coming in any time from now. If he's coming in this lake, then there's a possibility that um, he might not be a, a local fox, if you like. He might be traveling some distance. to get that one that was uh, he was just out in the next field about uh, what was he 80 85 meters so um, I just spotted him out there just motioning around I quickly got the rifle up and just got straight onto him and dropped him he just went straight over so excellent we'll count and have a look see if that's a dog or a vixen well there we go one vixen not particularly big fox but it uh, doesn't need to be a big fox to do a big amount of damage but anyway that's the one we're after so that is good excellent I shall uh, leave this by the lambing shed here for the farmer in the morning right well that was a uh, successful evening so I'm going to head home have a little nightcap to celebrate but I hope you've enjoyed the episode and thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe